Okay, for the second video in this series of UML tutorials in Visio 2007, we're going to create a simple sequence diagram. So to start, go to File, New, and Software and Database. And we're going to go down and we're going to pick UML Model US Units. So it's going to open up a blank drawing and load all the shapes for the UML templates on the left hand side here and we're going to make a sequence diagram. So we'll start by just clicking on the UML sequence template and we're going to be using the shapes in here to create a very simple UML sequence diagram. First I'm going to zoom in to 100% and then I'm going to drag some things over. We're going to have two objects. We're going to have a patient object and a system object. So this is just a simple diagram to show how to draw a UML sequence diagram. We're not going to get into the back end uh, functionality in Visio here where we can set class properties and so forth for the different aspects of uh, our UML model that could be, then be used uh, with Visual Studio.net for actually doing development work. We're just going to use Visio as a drawing tool. So we can use these shapes here to create a very well formatted simple sequence diagram. So I've created two objects on the page by dragging them from the templates. Object 1 I'm just going to name as a uh, patient and I'm not going to worry about the classes uh, because we're not going to be using this with Visual Studio.net so I'm just going to leave it as class 1 but we could make updates here if we had a class hierarchy that we wanted to use in our UML model uh, and I'm just going to name this patient okay so it changes the label to patient for the second object this is going to be our system so I'm going to call it appointment system okay so those two things have been created and labeled, patient and appointment system. Now we want to show what communication messages are being sent back and forth between these two objects. Uh, and we're going to do that using our lifelines and our activation bars. You notice that each object already has a lifeline connected to it. So to extend these, all you need to do is click on it. You'll see a little yellow diamond pop up. Grab that, click and hold, and drag down. And you can extend the lifeline as, long, as far as you need to do that on both okay now we're going to need to show when these objects are active and sending messages back and forth so we can drag a couple activation bars onto the canvas I'm going to drag one over and you notice that as we put it on the lifeline the ends highlight in red when it's lined up and connected so now it's glued to the lifeline and we can do that on both of these so that gluing keeps it connected so if we move the object around the lifeline stays in the same place and the activation bar stays connected to the lifeline we can also adjust the length of the lifeline by clicking on it excuse me by clicking on it and dragging the length of the activation bar up and down okay so we've got our two activation bars now on our on our objects lifelines now we just want to put in the messages that are going to go back and forth between these two now you notice there's a bunch of different types of messages over here. In class we just talked about basic messages going back and forth, so we're just going to use the basic message uh, shape. So we're going to click on the message shape and drag three of these onto the canvas, and we'll then connect those to the activation bars. The first one is going to be a message from the patient to the appointment system. So just like the other connectors we used in the use case diagram you just drag the head and tail of the arrow to the appropriate size to represent the message so we're going to drag the arrow over here to the appointment system and the tail to the activation bar on the patient we're going to show a message coming back from the appointment system so we can drag the tail of the arrow to the appointment system and the head over to the patient and then we've got one message going back from the patient to the appointment system so we connect them as well. And again, we want to make sure that they connect in red so that these endpoints connect to these little hash marks in the activation bar. That makes it so that when we move things around, everything stays glued together. Okay? So, the last thing we need to do is just name our messages. Give them names to represent what information is being passed back and forth in the sequence diagram. To do that, we just double click and the dialog box pops up and we can change the name. So we're going to change this one from patient name, or from, I'm sorry, from name message one to patient requests an appointment. So request appointment. Okay. Message two, the system is going to send back 
the uh, the system is going to send back the uh, available appointments to the patient. So we'll say available appointments. And then message three, the patient selected an appointment and provides that information back to the system. Okay, so we have there a simple use case diagram where we have a patient object interacting with an appointment system. The patient sends a request for an appointment, the system sends back available appointments, and the patient sends back to it a selected appointment. So we used object shapes, we used activation bar shapes, and we used message shapes to create this simple sequence diagram in Visio. To export this as an image and to be inserted into Word, PowerPoint, or web page, we can follow the same process we did for the use case diagram where we select everything and save it as a JPEG. Hope that was helpful and good luck with Visio and UML.